When Woodfull led his men out, England were faced with the almost hopeless task of scoring 380 runs in four and three quarter hours to win. Our opening pair were Walters, the English captain, and Sutcliffe of Yorkshire. Wall opened to the bowling for the visitors to Sutcliffe, and fiery bowling it was. Herbert was hit on the hand and leg, then he got going and looked like staying there forever. He knocked both Walls and O'Reilly's bowling about until he was caught by Chipperfield. 51 for one, Sutcliffe 24. The crowd was tense with excitement, Australia pushing her advantage to the full. Wiley Grimmett bowling to Hammond, who was doing his best to keep his wicket intact. He scored 25 before McCabe caught him off O'Reilly. Then Grimmett got Walters LBW, 91 for three, last man 46, a captain's innings. O'Reilly, whose figures were seven wickets for 54, is here bowling to Patsy Hendren. He never allowed Hendon to settle down, and Chipperfield found yet another victim, 110 for five. Ames did little better, scoring only 12. But Leyland's defensive innings was almost perfect. Gary's duck did little to help England. He fell yet another catch to Chipperfield, off Grimmett, while Leyland at 18 was caught and bowled by Grimmett. Our last man in, Mitchell, made four runs. Then O'Reilly, now bowling, closed the English innings by getting him LBW. So ends the first test. Australia, worthy winners by 10 minutes or 238 runs. Farns, our young Essex bowler, took over the match, 10 wickets for 179, a fine achievement. Well, here's to the next meeting. And may the best team win. And that's as cricket should be.